Hi, I'm Liz Shannon Miller. I'm TV editor over at IndieWire. And of course, we're joined today by the lovely Katie Mixon. I'm so happy to be here. Thank y'all for coming. This is so fun. <laughs> so we've got a bunch of audience questions. Uh, Give them to me. Yes. but Whatever we'll you want to know. But let's, uh, let's just start off by having you tell everyone a little bit about, you know, your journey to, the, to, becoming, to becoming an actor. Oh, my. Where to begin, Liz? Well, for sure, you were born. Right. I am from, originally from Pensacola, Florida. Um, I always knew that I wanted to do this. I just always knew it. Um, some of the, the huge influences in my life was Carol Burnett, Lucille Ball. I grew up watching them at Nick at night, late at night. And so um, I knew that I wanted to get training and do this. I knew I wanted to do it for the longevity of it. And um, I grew up, you know, with musical theater and theater and all that kind of stuff. So long story short, I, um, academics were really not my thing. <laughs> I knew I needed to graduate. So this, my senior year, um, I was very, very blessed. I got a huge um, honor called National Federation for the Advancement in the Arts. Like a thousand people give their interviews, I mean their audition video. Um, I gave it and they choose 10 out of a thousand. And so I was chosen um, and I couldn't have been more grateful. So I went down to Miami, Florida and I got adjudicated and you kind of go against yourself. And so all of a sudden I went in there with Kenneth Washington of the Guthrie Theater and just, you know, all of them. They said, Katie Mixon, what do you want to do? And I said this, I said I want to get a training with uh, Shakespeare and Tennessee Williams and Brecht and Moliere and all of it. Um, I didn't want to just go to a singing and dance in school. And they said, Carnegie Mellon Conservatory has their last audition date in Atlanta, Georgia in two days. So I went home and told Donna Lee, my mom, <laughs> and the rest is history. I went to Atlanta, Georgia, and I think it was at the Marriott audition for them on their tour. And um, I went in there and gave them four monologues and three songs, and um, I trained there in Pittsburgh. Um, and so then I did that for four years. It was everything. My very first job, I, you know, summer stock was a huge thing. I didn't, I didn't know what it was until I was up in it. And so I, kind of the first beginning job ever was when I was 19 years old. Um, you know, I'm from the South, so that was a huge situation in the conservatory because you have to get rid of the accent. And so it was a process, but I did it. And I got Calpurnia in Julius Caesar. In, at the Utah Shakespeare Festival. And so I did that for four months and got paid $250 every two weeks. I cried every time, because it was no money. And I did, I, I was uh, under understudy to Ariel in The Tempest, and then Pirates of, Isabel and Pirates of Princess. I did 10 shows a week. And uh, that was the beginning. So, yeah. That's wonderful. Aww. Do you, do you still have lines you remember from those plays that... I do not, honey. <laughs> I wish it did. <laughs> I'm sure something could spark my memory, but I don't. I don't right now. No, of course. Yeah. Honey. So, so you're transitioning from theater to on-screen work. Uh, what, was, what was a big part of that? It was real crazy. Um, I did a show, you know, at the end of senior year, you do a showcase in New York and Los Angeles. I didn't know anything. And so, but I knew I wanted to do it. I wanted to entertain. And so I got very, very blessed. I, I was just so unbelievably fortunate to get with the most wonderful management company, an incredible agency. Um, and they were all, you know, by coastal. Um, but I just knew I was gonna go to New York. I was like, I'm, you know, gonna do New York. And one thing led to another. And I, Los Angeles was where it was at. So I had never been and I, uh, came here and I was real green, real green. I've used my eyebrows a lot. I had a lot of facial expressions. <laughs> it was a whole situation. And so, um, so everybody was like, she's green, what are we gonna do? I think, the, the, I think I went in for Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I got one in for Mr. and Mrs. Smith back in the day, got a call back. It was like me and you know 10 other girls, and then they're like, she's green. So it was, I had to go through a, a, a channel of you know, what to do. You know, 
And um, and then I got my, that was in, I think that was in June of 2003. And then I got my first job ever on a show called It's All Relative. Um, and I got fired. I played Susie the Waitress. They didn't need Susie the Waitress. I had seven lines and for some reason, uh, the director hated me. They, he did not dig me at all. I don't really know why. I was real prepared. Um, but I totally got fired. Still got paid, which was lovely. But I was, <laughs> I was on the Paramount lot, literally. And they're like, Kitty Mixon, they called. And I'm eating cantaloupe in my trailer. And they were like, honey, Susie's not needed anymore in this episode. And I was, it was Dunsky. Sobbed my heart out, sobbed. Then I got Frasier, and then um, uh, it was a dating situation with, with him, and he thought, he was lovely, and, um, but he thought that I was too, he's gonna look like a pedophile. So um, I got, we got fired from Frasier. <laughs> I still got paid. <laughs> So then my third situation happened, I got a pilot. I got a pilot and I played Audrey and it was called Marriage 101. It did not have the chops to go to prime time, but um, I got it and that was the beginning. So. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, I hope that wasn't too long-winded. No, okay. no, it was fascinating. Just kind of giving you the background. Yeah, well, I mean, I feel like that's, you know, the, the journey of any actor is a lot of, you know, and then I got fired st sorts of stories. Totally. Um, and you, you also mentioned the, you know, being, if, when you first came here, you were pretty green. How do you, how does that, does that go away? How does that go away? I think, I think I tapped into, you know, my, my instincts. My instincts were always right happening. Do you feel me? I just had to like understand I'm, it's not for 2,000 people. It's for one person and the camera's right there. Like I had to just learn quickly, but I'm a quick learner. I learn very quick. So I adapted. I'm an adapter. I always have been no matter where I am. So I, um, I hooked in and I got it and I was like, I'm on to it. I'm on to it. Before y'all are on to it, I'm on to it. So um, I handled it, evidently. Fantastic. Tried to. I'm going to take, uh, go to our first audience question. This Please is from, do. This is from Felicity Smith. Love it. And Felicity Smith, uh, if you want to wave, wave hello. Hi Felicity. Hi, Felicity. How are you? <laughs> uh, but Felicity would like to know, how do you feel about working in TV? Felicity? I'm having the time of my life. It is heaven. It is absolute heaven. It's just, it's quite special to be able to do what you love to do, you know? And I, every single day, could not be more grateful. And it's so special to be able to be given a role. I've been really, you know, blessed. I've, I've been able to be, you know, do roles that I just adore and love. And so it's really amazing. Thank you for your question. And you've gotten to do a really exciting range of television work. I feel like, you know, you've gotten to, you know, especially like moving in it, it, within the comedy world, you've gotten to do single camera, you've gotten mm -hmm. to do multi-camera. Mm -hmm. um, what, what, what for you is the difference between working in single camera versus multi-camera? Multi-camera is theater. It is theater in the round. It is immediate. You know, if they're not digging that joke, you know, if you need to do it different. I love it. I adore multi-cam. Um, and then single cam is just like you're doing a film. It's literally like, you know, you shot as a, as a film. And um, I, I adore a multicam very much. It's where my heart is, but I am embracing the single cam. I really, really am. I've got no other choice but to embrace it. I'm in it now. <laughs> Well, it's, I, I've, I've spoken with you before and you've talked about how special American Housewife is for you as a show. Um, talk to me about a little bit about like that first, when you first read the script, what was your reaction? Well, she's real, she was a firecracker. She is a firecracker. <laughs> I'm talking in the present. She's a firecracker. Um, I was coming from Mike and Molly and so blessed to be you know, doing that for six years, playing Victoria who smoked a lot of weed and drank. <laughs> Quite, you feel me? Quite different um, than the Katie Otter situation. 
So I was looking for, um, we found out we were done in October of, I think, uh, 2015. So I was looking for a role that I just had never done. Something that, like, they're like, you're not going to wear any makeup. You're going to be covered up to your neck. You're going to be wearing baggy clothes. Like, I was just like, well, I welcome it. And so um, I, read the, I read the script, and immediately I got her. Honey, I got her. I don't know how I got her, but I was like, I get Katie Otto. And um, I walked into that room. Uh, four days later, uh, Michael Molly stopped. I stopped filming that in January 29th. Then four days later, I walked into the American Housewife room, and I, the rest was history. So crazy, right? I didn't even have time to process anything, but I was just like, I'm doing it. So, yeah. I mean, it must be tough leaving a long-running show. Honey, I was so ready. I mean, I, I it, of, of course, my goodness, the people that I'm surrounded by with Melissa, you know, McCarthy and, and Billy and Swoozy. And it was, I grew up on that show. I'm 36 years old now. And I, I literally, I started that show, I think I was 27. So I grew up on it, you know, and it was heaven. I had the time of my life, I had the time of my life. And then I'm ready. And then you graduate and you're ready for the next situation. And I welcomed it with open arms. So, yeah. Um, you have such amazing on-screen chemistry with your with with Dietrich Bader, who plays your husband. Um, he's so special. He, so tell me, talk about a little bit about the first time you met him. I will. I, I read. <laughs> done. <laughs> done and done. I I read with like nine boys, nine men, and I was handling it. Like they always, you have to go in front of everybody, and there's a chemistry read and everything. So I was giving it a hundred percent. I was believing in all of them. And um, they couldn't find him. They just couldn't find him. They were like, we can't, we can't find, you know, we can't find him. And so Dietrich came in, and it was him and another, another guy who was lovely also. And I rounded the corner. We were on ABC on the fifth floor, and I rounded the corner. And he goes, hi. He comes from North Carolina School of Fine Arts. So we have that in common, that conservatory background, basically. And so he goes, hi. And I go, hi. And uh, I said, it's so nice to meet you. And he said, it's so nice to meet you. And I said, let's go do a chemistry read. So it was immediately, I just knew from the, from the very beginning. And I knew that that was Greg. And so he left, and I turned around to the, the producers and I said, Loves, that's him. They said, That's you, Greg, right there. And they were like, Really? And I go, Yeah. <laughs> I go, Yeah, we got to get him immediately. So it was, so that's how it all happened, basically. It's wonderful. He's quite special. I mean, talk a little bit about the process of building that kind of chemistry. Because it, you know, it sounds like it, it, we had an immediate connection, but mm -hmm. then you guys have to translate that into we have been married for a decade, over a decade. Totally. You just jump in. You really jump in. Um, I, in the audition process, I had Uggs on. And so in the scene, he needed to, like, rub my feet or something. And I'm just, I don't have any shame in my game. So I literally go... <laughs> I was like, take those Uggs off. I was like, here we go. So he started rubbing my feet, and I, we immediately fell into it. And I, I'm such a big fan of, like, in a chemistry read, you know, you're, you're off. You go up for the chemistry. You go up to, like, pose for them, <laughs> you know, like, together. Um, but what I did with him is I said, I'm going to go up on stage with him. And the producers were like, what? Honey, you don't have to. And I go, but I'm going to. Because I wanted, I wanted Channing to see, I wanted all ABC to see us. I'm, in the, I'm like, he's in the light, and I'm in the dark, and I wanted them to be able to see us. So that's what turned it. So, I, so it was on a random Wednesday night. I had my hopes in, my hair on top of my head, and I was like, here we go. So I jumped up, and I did the scene with him so that they could see us, see us together. And he was grateful, and I was grateful to him. But we just, like, I, you, I just, we had it from the beginning, just jumped in. Yeah, honey. Um, in terms, of, and you also, you know, have these three wonderful child actors you work with. Yes. Um, so special. <laughs> They're so special. Uh, talk about, like, your, you know, the process of essentially forming an on-screen family with them. I found out about all of them. I mean, they were, I, I 
got cast and then, you know, they were getting it all together and I would come in each time and Kenny Schwartz and Rick Wiener and Sarah Dunn, they were like, we got, um, we got Julia. And I said, yes, she's gonna play Anna Cat. And it was like each one they would introduce them to me and I would hear all about them. And then when the pilot happened and we were in rehearsal and you know, doing all that kind of stuff and forming you know, what, what needed to happen, um, that's when the first times that I met all of them was quite magical. I had immediate connection to Daniel. I just got him. <laughs> I just got him. I don't know what it was. He was like, hey. I was like, what's up? <laughs> like, like. And then Julia, we were, she was coming out of her costume fitting, and I was going in, and I said, are you my Anna Cat? She was like, yes, and like ran into my arms. I know. Real special. Real, real special. And then, um, and then Sweet Meg, Meg Donnelly, who's just incredible. She's magical. She's musical theater, so her background's like totally musical, like what I came from. So she's really special. Awesome. Yeah. Now, um, are how, are, would you say that they're very different from the characters they play? Uh-huh. I would. Well, Daniel, I don't think. Daniel... <laughs> I think Daniel's, I think he's slightly close to Oliver in a little bit of the sense. Um, Meg is quite different than, than her character. And then Sweet Julia is not at all like Anna Cat. Um, but she's very, um, yeah, they're just, they, yeah, they're different, totally. That's great. Yeah. Um, I'm going to take another audience question. Please do. Uh, this is from Bernadette. Hi, Bernadette. Bernadette would like you to know that, first off, you were super hilarious. Thank you so much, Bernadette. And uh, secondly... Hi, she honey. <laughs> That's Bernadette. Hi. Um, and then, uh, how did your acting training prepare you or not for such large roles? Great question, Bernadette. Um, I got technique, right? So when you go into a conservatory, um, I was kind of a wild card. <laughs> I walked in uh, to conservatory, I just, I attack everything. I don't question it, I immediately go with an instinct. I don't, um, I'm not real method. I, 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 well, I'll, I mean, I do my research, God bless, but I, um, when I was at conservatory, I just truly, they didn't know what to do with me basically. <laughs> they didn't quite know what to do with me because I came in, I mean, I have a Southern accent, who I am, and then I would immediately switch it or immediately transform into, you know, a different character. And they didn't, um, they didn't quite know what to do, but they welcomed it. And so that's what was really, really special. But they honed it in. So I had to learn text work. So you have to learn what's your objective, what you want, um, you know, how are you going to tickle the tease? Like, how are you going to get that, you know, situation your way? And um, I, what was difficult for me was I would just do it. I wouldn't need to write it down and I had to write it down. I had to learn how to write it down. <laughs> so I would, I would do something and they would say, Katie Mixon, yeah, you just got an A+. Plus. Um, what did you do? And I said, I don't know what I just did. <laughs> It was the worst. So that's what that's that that's what it helped me with Bernadette. It helped me um, be able to when a million things are going on, and it is a hundred and four degrees outside, like in the nap. It was very hot, and I am able to focus and be true and be present and be real and um, bring it up off the page. So that's what it's it helped me do. Hopefully. You're welcome. Um, I want to ask a, a small technical question, but it's Please always do. one I'm interested in when it comes to a show that has this much voiceover. Yes. So when, you know, it, it's written in the script, of course, so you know it's there. Mm -hmm. When you're in production, like how much are you thinking about the fact, oh, there's going to be a line over the scene? It's quite crazy. It's a, it's a whole thing, really. Um, I have... I I'll, sometimes I'll be like, oh, they say it out loud. They'll someone will say it. Uh, my stand-in, who's lovely, she'll say it sometimes, um, and everything while they're filming me. Sometimes I'll just say it in my head, 
sometimes when I'm just in the mood, I'm like, I'll do it. I got it. <laughs> you know, and we're in the 17th hour. Um, yeah, but that was interesting, beginning to, to, to work with the voiceover. It took me a hot second to learn how to do it. And then I learned, I think. Yeah. Was this your first experience with that then? Um, yeah. I think it was, honey. I think it was. I can't think of another another project or something that was this heavy with the voiceover situation. But yeah, I mean, you've also you have done like a lot of voice work, um, which I know is a very different sort of acting. Yeah, it's a whole thing. I have not done a lot. I've done some, but um, yeah, I, a lot of people think that I've like done like so many. But I've I've done I've just I've done like sporad. It's been sporadic, like here and there. Do you know? And I love that too. Yeah. I mean, it, it, in comparison to a lot of other voice actors, yes. I think who have done, you know, whose resumes are hundreds of credits long. Completely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go to another audience question because I, I think this is something that we all want to talk about a bit, which is, has playing Katie ch influenced or changed your approach to motherhood? This is from a, this is from TQ Gaskins, and um, because as in, in case in case you didn't know, uh, it, you knew, uh, but in case the audience doesn't know. <laughs> The entire, you were pregnant pretty much the entire first season of filming. Yeah. Guys, I just had a baby four, four weeks ago. <laughs> Kingston! <laughs> Thank you, loves. Honey, it's crazy. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Um, I, this, you know, a lot of it is taken from Sarah Dunn, who's the creator of the show. A lot of the, the situations and the, the kind of experience she finds herself in is taken from her experiences. Her and I, in real life, are real different. We look at life just in a different, she's lovely. We're just, we're two different people. And in the beginning of while I was filming it, I was like, well, I'm not going to be that kind of mommy. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do it different. <laughs> but I welcome whatever you need me to do. <laughs> do you know what I'm talking about? And so, um, right. So that being said, everything goes out the window. I don't know what is going on. I am in my fourth week <laughs> with a newborn. I don't know anything. I don't have it together. <laughs> I tried to, my first time to come out in civilization today. Um, so we're all in it together. <laughs> So I, I mean, true humble pie. Like, I don't know what is going on. <laughs> I'm breastfeeding, which is an amazing situation, and that's all I know. So I'm taking it day by day. <laughs> I'm taking it day by day, but going back, let me tell you, going back into that season two, I'm, I'm going to be real ready. Do you know? Just like uh, totally understand. Now I get it. Now I really understand it. Before I'm acting, right? I'm acting, but I, I have a, it's a whole another situation, right? <laughs> Loving my life, adoring my life, it's just a whole thing, as y'all know. <laughs> well, it, talk about a little bit about filming while pregnant, which, I mean, being pregnant is pretty tough, and you made 23 episodes of, uh, in season one. I did. Um, honey? I just did it. <laughs> I just did it. I, I couldn't quite grasp what was happening um, until we, it was, I think it was the end of January, and that's when he started kicking in the middle of scenes. So there's millions of scenes where Kingston is going to town <laughs> and my belly, and I am trying to act my face off and not show it. So it was... Madness. It was really, really crazy. Um, and then it got real intense towards March when we started entering into March. March 17th was our last day. And I was like, can't do another day. <laughs> I was like, it's been real, folks. So, yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. But you just do it. I just did it, honey. I just did it. The one advantage I could see is that there's a lot of food around on a set. Totally. That's very true. <laughs> About that. <laughs> About, you know, I didn't have any morning sickness, which is a, I know, a massive blessing. No morning sickness whatsoever. And so um, I randomly, I wasn't that hungry. Like, I think just because I was just working so much and the hours were so crazy, I just, I didn't, 
I didn't eat very much. And then comes March. So then I stopped filming. And that there it goes. It all happened. It all happened. <laughs> Everything that I was in denial of for the last, like, I guess, eight months or something, it all happened in, in March. So I began to eat. And I was getting ready for the baby. Yeah. Um, does anyone mind if I uh, talk about the season finale a little bit? Just because I think it's it's relevant, um, but I was just I don't I just, people get people get cranky about spoilers. I oh, like oh, I like to be, I like to be careful. Okay, love um, it. but when did so in the season finale you finally get to at least show that you have a belly? It, yes. It, when did when did they pitch the, when did the writers pitch you the idea of of the of that, of that script? I mean, they pitched it to me in January. They're like, we have an idea, and I was like, how are we going to handle it? And they said. Um, they came up with that whole thing. They came up with the whole idea of me pretending to be pregnant and getting to use my real belly, which is so fun. And then, um, and then where it was gonna go, they left it open-ended, you know? So I thought that that was lovely because it could go either, either way. And let me tell you, if they end up deciding to do a fourth baby, I got lots of, <laughs> lots of material. <laughs> I was in that Cedar sinai and I'm so grateful. Cedar sinai was amazing. But if one more person grabbed my boob and tried to put it in the baby's mouth, I mean, it was like, I was like, this craziness. Like, I was like, from Tatiana to Noosh to like Nora to, I mean, I have all of them. I'm, I have all of the names. Anyway, they were lovely, but I've got so much material now. They want to do a fourth baby. So, anyway. Is, this, is, this, is a Housewife the kind of show where, you know, people will gather, tell stories, and then eventually find them appearing in scripts? Yeah. They come up, they have a lot of, they literally are like, Kate, okay, they're like, they write it down. Like, well, I'll just be talking, or they'll be talking, and they're like, Kate, okay, this is what happened to me the other day, da 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 And they'll, someone's like, write it down! So then it comes, it comes out in like eighth episode. That's what happened, you know? So I think what was really cool, um, a special moment in time, was the pool episode. The pool episode they wanted to do in August. For some reason, it got canned. It got, not canned, but it got, in the back burner and then they brought it out again so because you know in the beginning it's all about you know she's not a size two she talks about it and then it's like okay we get it we're moving on and so and then it was amazing um at the end to be able to kind of circle back around and realize uh the you know what she's what she's been going through so I thought it was very special to kind of leave that topic and um and then circle back around to it, so, yeah. What kind of feedback have you gotten about the show's exploration of, you know, what it's like to not be a size two in a size two world? It's been real fascinating. It's a whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> when I signed on, I didn't really think about it, but I mean, um, it's been wild. It's been quite amazing, honey. Uh, people relate. People really relate, and that is just the biggest gift as an actor to be able to be given a role where you dive into it. And you know me, I'm, I'm quite different than Katie Otto. I've been a size two and a size four and a size eight, size 10. Um, it's not my identity. It's just not, it never has been. And so for a lot of other people, it is, it is. And so what's just been so special is I'm just a big fan of, you know, you gotta march to the beat of your own drum. You can't look to the left or the right. There's nobody else like you in this world. So anyway, I'm, I, it's been a very, very special thing to be able to be like, you're empowered. Put on that suit. Do you know? Like, I, it's, been, it's been a wonderful, wonderful ride. It really has been. Yeah. I'm going to take another, uh, go to another audience question. Okay. This is from Adriana Bella, or Bell. Um, and uh, she would like to know, what, what, what was the most difficult scene you have ever done? Adriana is Hi, honey. <laughs> oh, amazing. Thank you. <laughs> yes, Taylor Highwater. Um, what was the most difficult scene in American Housewife? Or most difficult scene? <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> 
don't know. I'm not really sure, honey. That's a phenomenal question. I, I, I can't, I literally cannot, I cannot think of anything except maybe the pool episode when it was 149 degrees <laughs> and I had to jump in five months pregnant. I mean, like I'm thinking about it. Um, that's the only thing that I can think about. Hell or high water, we were, I was, you know, uh, we were in 112 degree weather, which is fine. That's totally fine. But it was hot, you feel me? And I'm with the wonderful, wonderful peeps with Ben Foster and, you know, Chris Pine and Jeff Bridges and everything. I don't know, honey. That's all been quite lovely. There's not been one that I'm really like, this is an unbelievable scene, but yeah. Um, the question, I, the, yes. the question of like, you know, what is the most unexpected thing you've fa found yourself having to do? Here we go. Ready? Drive angry. Circuit, <laughs> drive angry. Circa 2010. I'm in Shreveport, Louisiana with Nick Cage. And I'm playing a waitress. And you never know with those kind of situations, right? So I walked in. He was drinking a Red Bull. And I had to kiss him I had to kiss him he had to grab my neck had to kiss him it was a whole thing it was a whole situation <laughs> but you just never know so you're just like I'm here I'm giving 150 percent give it to me like what do you need and um and it was just so intense it was hysterical it was he grabbed the neck he made out with my face <laughs> and I am like in it and then he pushes me back and then I like saunter back into the in the background. It was a whole thing. I don't know. I guess that like that comes to mind. Like what? Like something that you just like really don't know how it's gonna go. Don't know you know what to expect. Um, yeah, that was one. And Nicholas Cage seems like such a chill, calm guy. Chill. He's <laughs> lovely. He's totally lovely. Yeah. He's so great. Um, I think with Mike and Molly, you know, I didn't know how to do a bong. When I started, I didn't know, I didn't know what, I didn't know how to do it. <laughs> so we started Mike and Molly and they were, honey, you're doing it wrong. So I had to learn, had to learn, had to learn. <laughs> so, uh, without, yeah. without naming names, who taught you? The creator. <laughs> the creator taught me. So, God bless. <laughs> um, we've got a good, another audience, uh, our last audience question, I think, uh, from, oh, Oh, okay. Do you have a question? All right. Oh, this is from Faith. Hi, Faith. I love your name. I'm all about that. Is this your favorite role you've ever played? It is the most... It is one of the most special roles I've ever, I've ever been given. I really, really love it. So, yes. Yes to your answer. I mean, yes to your question. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> um, yes, so, but we do have another one uh, from April Sugarman. Talk about it, April. Um, <laughs> uh, so, as an experienced sitcom actress, do you have any advice or suggestions for women wanting to break into sitcoms? And there's a follow-up. I, you want to break into sitcoms. Um, yeah, honey, I, I think that my main, be ready for anything at any time. I'm such a firm believer of that. Be ready and, and you, you're able to, when it's time to go, you're going to go. And we can't quite think on it. We can't quite meditate on it. Do you know what I'm talking about? Although that's important too. I'm just saying in this kind of situation, um, Whenever that opportunity comes to you or comes knocking, you know you trust that instinct and you trust that gut and you jump 100%. And the second part to her question is, um, yeah, is, is there a piece of advice that you were given that made a big difference for you? Let's think. Yeah, Jimmy Burroughs directed me for the first two years of Mike and Molly, and he's heaven. And it was an 
honor and the biggest blessing to be under his direction. We were in rehearsal one day, and he kind of let me roll with what I do. And so he goes, honey, and one time, I, I don't know what I did. It was just, it was a random Tuesday, and I was trying something different. <laughs> and she, <laughs> but every time it had been working, you know, with, uh, with, uh, with the studio read-throughs and all that kind of stuff on Monday. And so he said, honey. I said, yes, sir. And he said, uh, you need to always go with your instinct, go back to Monday. And I was like, done. So it was so special. He welcomed me. You know, I'm a try, I like to try, I like to do it different a lot of different times. You know, I'm not the kind of person that's like, we're going to do it the same every time. And so um, I was trying something new. But he, he reiterated, he was like, you go with that instinct. And I was like, yes, sir. So, yeah. That's great. Yes. So when do you go back in the production for season two? Oh, my. Um, <laughs> I go back, we, it's quite crazy. I go back, I think August, August 7th is when we're starting, is, is when we're starting. We shoot each episode in five days, and I shoot about eight scenes a day, eight to 10 scenes a day, right? So I'm fixing to go back into that, which I couldn't be more grateful. <laughs> I couldn't be more grateful, but yeah, honey, we, I think that we were trying to do it at the end of August, but now it's August 7th. I'm back in it, season two. Very exciting. Yeah, honey. Do you, do you know anything, anything you can tease about, aside from your newfound understanding of motherhood? Oh. Uh, I'll tell you what. <laughs> any, anything, anything we can anticipate looking forward to? I think a lot of things are going to happen at the school. Some stuff is going to go down. She's gonna find herself in um, some different situations, as she always does. And, um, and we're gonna explore, we're gonna explore the kids. Uh, they're, they're growing up, we're gonna explore Dietrich Gregg's world and um, bring in a lot of very special guest stars, I believe, which is exciting. And um, yeah, stay tuned. Well, well, thank you so much for uh, such oh, a lovely talk with you. It is my pleasure. You. Yeah, thank you. Thank y'all so much for having me.